Hey everyone, Brendan Snyder here. How are you? Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to 10 tips for ordering CDs and vinyl from eBay. So I did do a previous video that was sort of the same thing, but about Amazon and I got a lot of great feedback. You guys seem to enjoy that. So I'm now going to do one here for eBay. And sort of the real purpose of this is that there aren't as many record stores as there once was out there. You guys have seen my Let's Go to the Record Store videos. I'm lucky enough to have a bunch of them around me and I'm willing to drive also to go to these things. But I know there's a bunch of you that don't have any close to you and you rely on places like Amazon and eBay and Discogs and stuff like that to order from. So that's the reason for these videos. Hopefully these will help you out. And so I want to start off first by doing a little bit of a refresher course on just eBay, what it is, how we get there, and all the stuff on the site so that as I'm going through this, it's going to make more sense to you. Take a look at this. Okay, so here we are on ebay.com. Uh, the setup is pretty simple. It's like most websites that you go to, whether it's Amazon or some of these other big ones. Uh, you've got your search engine right at the top. I've actually already got mine set to music, but they've got all kinds of things in here. You can search any number of things uh, through this and simply just typing in what you're looking for. That's kind of key. Uh, like most things, if you're on Google or you're um, searching on Amazon or here, it's best to put in the most amount of information you can. And I'm going to use this one as an example because it's a recent purchase. Richie Sambora, Undiscovered Soul, Japan CD. So Richie Sambora being guitar player for Bon Jovi. Undiscovered Soul is the name of the album I was looking for, and I specifically wanted a Japanese pressing. Could have written that in, but I just chose to write Japan. And I want CD. I don't want vinyl. So if you put all of those things in, you're going to get that. It's going to limit the search to those items. If you just write in Richie Sambora or even Richie Sambora CD, you're going to get everything. And if you can imagine some artists, whether we're talking Bon Jovi or The Grateful Dead or whatever, you can get a ridiculous amount of stuff. Now, something I wanted to also point out is, see, I'm currently set to music. If you just hit the search button right now without anything typed into that, it'll actually take you to their music section where you can check and you can search by category, cassettes, CDs, uh, you can trending artists, you can look at the big popular ones, you can shop by uh, big top sellers and stuff like that. So just another way to shop music is kind of cool. But I want to go back to the home page and I'm going to pull up something that I was actually looking at yesterday. It happens to be this center box set here. And uh, just to review what it is that we see on the page. So first thing that's uh, to note here is you're always looking at your condition. It is brand new. Well, otherwise it might say like new or very good or something like that. I like brand new items, which should mean it's still sealed in the plastic. In this case, this person has 14 of these to sell. Four of them are available. So it means that uh, there's four left. You can move on it quickly, but also know that there's a few copies and you have time to think and debate on it. Something else I love is the buy it now feature because I don't have to bid on it. I really don't like bidding and waiting and all of that sort of stuff. If the price is good, I like to buy it now and just have it. Aside from that, scrolling down, we get the shipping. And in this case, you can see that this person is offering free three to four day shipping, which is pretty darn good. They also tell you when it should arrive, Wednesday, July 19th to Thursday, July 20th. And they're using my zip code. Your zip code could be a little bit different, meaning in the amount of time that it takes to get to you. But also it tells us where they are located, Winston, Salem, North Carolina, United States. So this isn't coming from an outside country like Japan where it's going to take a super long time. I like to buy within the territory that I am. If you're in another country, you should look to buy locally there. I'm buying from the United States so that I can get my stuff faster. This person does accept 30-day returns, but also note that, that eBay guarantees everything. So even if this person said they didn't accept returns, if there was a problem, eBay would back you up on it. 
Payment wise, you got all these different options. I like PayPal, so that's good for me. And then the cool thing is if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see other people selling the same item and check the prices and say, well, you know, this one over here is uh, $25.89 versus $34.80 versus what we were paying up here, $39 and uh, decide whether you want to you know maybe buy one that is not brand new that's used or something like that also just note you got the pictures i think it is totally uh, important to always buy something that has photos so that you can study the product but we're going to talk more about that in a bit okay so tip number one and this one here i think is a really important one uh, must have multiple photos don't order anything that doesn't show photos and don't order from anywhere that uses a stock photo. It's that kind of one that is a, you know, the promo picture that is not the in the jewel case or not the LP where you can see that they've taken it like, you know, on a desk or holding it up or whatever. This is one of those ones that is just a photograph. And so don't order from those because you're not seeing the real product. Make sure there's multiple photos and look closely to see if there's any damage in it so that you know exactly what you're going to get match it up to whether it says it is a like new or a very good or just a good or that sort of stuff but definitely make sure there's multiple photos so one thing i would always say when ordering off of ebay and this is the difference from Amazon Marketplace where you see no photos over there, but on eBay, you have an opportunity to see the product that you're buying. They are only supposed to be showing you ones that are what they're selling you, but you have to pay attention to if they're just stock photos or not. But this one here is a real one. And so I like these because as you can see, I'm zooming in on it and I'm looking at the CD tabs to see if there's any crimps or things. Uh, you can see a little bit of it. Uh, if I move my cursor too far over to it, but I'm gonna point to it with my finger here. You can see there's some stuff that's right there on it. So I like to look very closely at this stuff and really see, but I don't see any crimp marks. So I'm okay with that and I go to the back and I can run my cursor over it. I don't see water damage. I don't see any creases there. And then I can go to another photo here. And now I can look at whether there are any creases under the tabs from the inside because sometimes they don't always make their way through. Sometimes people show photos of the CDs flipped around and you can see whether there's any scratches. But for me, that's all just a trick of the light. It doesn't tell much because if you hold the CD a particular way, it looks like there's no scratches and then other times there can be scratches. So I don't worry about that too much. What I also like to see is when people do uh, photos of the spine of this, but that's not always the case. As long as I can get the front, back, and the inside insert, I'm pretty happy. Tip number two, this one also really important, know your seller. Read the comments that people have left about that seller. Look at their rating. If they have, you know, um, 10,000 sales, but their rating is in the 80s, then what caused them to lose 15% of positive reviews? I'm gonna wanna know that. For me, if you have a really high number of sales, your rating should be up in the high 90s. Uh, once in a blue moon, I find people that have 100% positive ratings. I'm never quite sure how that happens, but um, know that. And I will talk a little bit about that too, uh, about those ratings and things of that uh, more in a minute. But take a look at this clip and see what I'm talking about. Okay, in terms of getting to know your seller, that information is over here on the right-hand side, seller information. And this one here, Mad Rush Media. And then in the parentheses here, it shows how many sales they've made. This person's made over 101,309 sales, and they've got 100% positive feedback. I, that's amazing to me. I've actually never seen somebody who has that many sales, and it's always positive. There's usually someone that throws the, you know, the monkey wrench in and has it lower. But for me, if the positive feedback is in the high 90s, I generally trust the people. But you can also always follow up and contact the seller if you've got questions and stuff. And of course, you can click on the uh, name there. You can go see their page, uh, see what they're selling, which is all good stuff. And then you could go through here and read that positive feedback just to know. 
And so right off the bat, you can see that these people are giving high ratings, talking about quick shipping, excellent service, and so forth. And so you can just double check to know who it is that you're purchasing from and make sure that it's someone that you actually want to uh, you know, have that uh, contact with. This next one, tip three, has kind of become something new for me, but now I feel like I'm gonna have to really, really pay attention to it, which is always read the description. For me, usually I go on, I inspect the photos because that's the product I'm supposed to be getting. I look to see if they list it as a like new or a very good or anything of that nature. And I will click on the description, but I don't usually read through all the gobbledygook that they have. And what I've noticed is sometimes they are burying things in that description further down. And I just had that happen to me where everything looked good in the photos, then I got the product and I was blown away by how bad it was. And when I called them out on it, they said, ah, you didn't read the description because we pointed that out in it. Take a look at this and see what I'm talking about. In terms of things always to keep an eye out for, you just wanna read all the information on it, not just looking at the pictures, because in this particular case, these photos here, here looked pretty good to me. In fact, I couldn't tell that on the uh, inlay card there that there's a water damage, plus they have folded the spines in, so I could not see the damage on that. When I looked at this, the condition says, like new. And I thought, okay, fine, even if there's a little bit of wear to it, it's telling me it's like new, it looked good in the photos. I looked over here too at the seller information, metal.chn, 4,923, and they've got 100% positive feedback. So I thought, hey, what could possibly go wrong? What could I lose on this thing? It's also only 99 cents plus $8 shipping. So for $8.99, I decided to go ahead and, uh, you know, take a chance on this thing. Now, I'm not finding it here because this has already been purchased and delivered to me, but it said it was shipping from China. And when it came, it actually came from Kentucky here in the United States. So that was sort of a, also a red flag right away on it. But one of the things I would always tell you is don't just take a look at the photos and expect that all the information is correct there. You wanna to go to the about this item, you wanna look at um, you know, the condition of it. So here it says, like new, an item that looks as if it was just taken out of the shrink wrap with no visible wear, which is absolute BS in terms of this item. And I took photos of it and they had water damage, the spine was creased, there was just all kinds of wear on it. And I sent the pictures to them and I said, hey, this isn't like new. And they said, oh, you didn't read the item description. And so I went back and I said, no, no, I read this thing. Uh, combining orders, you can buy multiple items with a jewel case, without a jewel case. Uh, all CDs are registered. See, airmail from China. I knew there was a place that I saw that. Um, and then this, and it was buried down in it. And if you didn't look really close, it says the inserts are excellent. Okay, it's excellent. It's like new. Tray card, good, but it has a water stain. First of all, that's not good in my opinion, if that's the case. Uh, the disc, I don't know what you means. I guess I'd have to look into that. Scratches that not affect play. Uh, no jewel case. Well, I did miss it. So it really was on me. In the end of the day, the guy did make it right. He gave me a 250 credit off of the 899 that I had spent on it. And I decided it really wasn't worth uh, making any more of a fuss about or going through the process of shipping it back if I was really only gonna pay about what? Uh, not uh, 650 or so, give or take on this item. Number four is another good one here. Always ask questions. If you are not sure, if you've been burned by something and you wanna double check, like knowing whether or not the spine is beat up on something and they don't have a photo, you can ask them to take a photo and send it to you. And a lot of times I find if I ask questions and I get zero response, do not buy from that person. Uh, they're just, there's something fishy, right? So if somebody does not reply and answer your questions or they're rude about it, then you're gonna have problems dealing with them and I would always recommend going with someone else. 
But in most cases, I find people are very helpful, very friendly, they wanna sell that product, and they're gonna show you or answer any of your questions for you. Number five on here, I've got the fact that you can bargain with the seller. So that's part of the asking question. So I have found things where they're selling three CDs, you know, a catalog or a period of time from one artist. All I really want is one of those in there. And sometimes you can ask the question and say, hey, would you be willing to sell that album separately? I'm willing to pay more than a third of the cost, you know, so they're actually gonna make more money out of those three than if they were to sell them all together. So you can kind of bargain like that. Sometimes I will go to a seller and make an offer and say, would you ship or would you sell this to me with, for free shipping? If they've got $4 shipping on it and it's $24, I'll say, would you do this $24 all inclusive instead of 28, that sort of a thing. So there's little ways you can bargain with them and you don't have to go and gouge them on it, but you know, every dollar, every penny helps, right? Number six on here, do your homework on rare items. Don't just take the word of the eBay seller as to how much something costs or how much something is valued at. They may be saying this is a super rare, hard to find item. And if you just Google it, it could be totally available, readily available, and for a lot less. So you definitely want to look up, confirm the prices. Um, like I showed at the beginning of this video, if you scroll down to the bottom, they list other people selling the product and you can compare prices you know but sometimes you have to look at the descriptions you need to know if you're buying a brand new one still sealed buying a used one what the condition is there could be a rare you know aspect of it when it was issued where it was issued that sort of stuff so sometimes there is a real reason why one costs a lot more than the other but just know what you're getting into and that way you're not gonna feel duped later on. If you go to your record store and you find a used copy for five bucks, but you paid 50 bucks online, just know what, uh, again, that you're getting yourself into there. All right, um, number seven, if the music artist, uh, if the, you know, the person that's selling it is actually the music artist, sometimes I find going over to their website, you might get it for a little bit less. So I have noticed before when you're scrolling down and you're looking at who the seller is, where it's shipping from, all that, you go, wait a minute, this is just a band who has posted stuff on eBay. Let me go to the website and see what they're selling it for. And usually they're selling it for a bit less over there. And so you can get it, you know, cheaper. But at the same time, uh, you know, whatever you're looking at on eBay, make sure to go check out on Amazon, Discogs, any of the other type of websites that you use, because you might get a better deal somewhere else. eBay is great, but it's not always top in terms of sales. So next thing on here, we're up to number eight on here. Don't be afraid to point out product that has grading issues. Uh, I've talked about this in some of the other clips that I was showing you, but uh, one of them in particular, when I was pointing out the Richie Sambora Undiscovered Soul album, and when this arrived, it might be a little hard to see here, but you can see there's damage in the wear because this was all crimped up. I took it and bent it back into place, but it's got all kinds of damage and stuff in it. And then the water damage, the same thing here. You can see the ripples that are in it as I move this. And again, a little hard to see. I'm not actually gonna pop this out because I just wanna make this uh, apparent. I'm taking this out here. But you can actually see the water damage, the brown line that is within this here and those ripples and everything that are within that. So um, it wasn't hard to spot. I had another instance of this. This one here where they used a stock photo. Now this was the only person selling it, so I didn't have a lot of options in it. And I got it for a good deal. It was only a few bucks. But when it arrived, it has this wear on it. And I called them out on it. And then it was another one of those sort of things where they said in the description that it did say that it had wear. So, you know, it was sort of like, ah, you know, miss that sort of thing. You, you wanna keep an eye on that. But don't be afraid to ask them either one, if you want a full refund and you're willing to ship back, or two, ask them if they're willing to discount. And usually they will. They wanna keep that high 
rating of positivity in their comments and they don't want somebody to go on there and give them a very low rating that screws up that positivity that's in there so a lot of these people will make it right for you they'll understand and say yeah i kind of you know screwed the pooch on that one and i didn't really tell you everything about it so don't ever be afraid to ask for the discount or suggest uh what it is that you feel would make it right i've gotten a lot of uh you know, discounts and things from it that I feel a lot better in the end of the day. All right, number nine, don't forget that eBay guarantees all of its sales. So as I talked about previously where uh, one of the sellers said, you know, 30 day returns, guarantee, all that sort of good stuff. Some of them say they do not accept returns, all sales are final. That's true, except when they don't deliver the product in the condition as described. If there is a problem in it or it is defective, they must take it back by eBay policy. So you can reach out to eBay and eBay will refund the money to you and go fight with them on your behalf. Very similar to how Amazon handles it. It's nice because you don't get in the middle of it. You don't have to wait for the money to come back. And nine times out of 10, they tell you just to keep the product, refund it, and they go out and fight for it and you don't end up having to return it in the end. So it's kind of a win-win. Although of course we all hate getting bad damaged product because a lot of times I gotta go out and rebuy it at that point and then I got two copies of it. All right, and the final thing, number 10 on here that makes eBay so great and a lot better than Amazon in my opinion, they package way better. Now, remember eBay is not the one actually packaging this stuff. It's the sellers on eBay. So it really comes down to when Amazon does it, that is a corporation. They have built into the cost that things get damaged and will get returned and it's cheaper for them to just deal with that than to spend the money on packaging. eBay, it's individual resellers and they care about their product and they want that positive rating so they're gonna package it much nicer. And if that means something to you, I can understand why you're gonna go to eBay. You might spend a few bucks more, you might wait a little bit longer for it, but you're gonna get it in very good, I mean, bubble wrapped, cardboard, in an envelope, like it's super good. Every time I get it, I'm just kind of blown away by it. Whereas when I get it from Amazon, you know, it's in a flimsy little plastic thing and half the time the cases are cracked. So there's a lot of pluses to eBay that outweigh shopping from other places. And then you have these other places, like I did the whole 10 tips for shopping with Amazon and there's a lot of pluses there. You can certainly compare both of them. I'm going to leave a li to, you know a link to the dis in the description to the 10 tips for buying CDs and vinyl from Amazon and hopefully between at least eBay and Amazon and any other sites you've got, you too can feel like you've got your own record store to shop from. All right everyone, take care, have a good one and I'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.